Mike Butcher with TechCrunch, and I'm here with Larry Harvey, the founder of Burning Man, and uh, JP Barlow, who is the co-founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, gentlemen, you're here at Le Web in London, and you've been there speaking about uh, you know, various issues that are interesting you right now. Um, would you say that uh, Silicon Valley has a, owes an intellectual debt to uh, some of the movements that you've been involved in over the last few years? Well, I think we've, we've all been co-evolving a, a variety of things. I mean, it, it started out, certainly, uh, I, I wrote for the Grateful Dead for a long time, and prior to that was involved with uh, the acid tests. Uh, and it was certainly the case that in the early days of, uh, of Silicon Valley, psychedelics were a very important thing. Uh, John Markoff wrote a wonderful book a few years ago called uh, What the Dormouse Said, which shows the, the relationship between Silicon Valley er, early computer culture, microcomputer culture, and, uh, and psychedelics. There was certainly a, there was a revolutionary zeal that was not simply psychedelic, it was also the notion of intellectual empowerment that, that people saw in those little machines to begin with. Um, the theme of the web is, uh, is the sharing economy and uh, Burning Man has to some extent represent almost sort of the foundation of some of the early thoughts about the sharing economy and the economy we live in now, we, people uh, sharing uh, their, their apartments, their cars, things like that. Um, Larry Harvey, at Burning Man, you, you guys kind of pioneered a lot of this. Well, we, we built a city in the desert, that, an ephemeral city, and uh, uh, while there uh, uh, you, you can't buy anything except for coffee and ice, which are public services. How can you be civilized without espresso? I, I don't know how. And, uh, uh, and then uh, 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 we're not, not only did we ban commercial transactions, but to, on the more positive side of it, we convened what we, we called a, a gift economy, which in the entire economy of that city is based on giving gifts. Uh, it, you know, the, in London here, the, the, you know, this nation of shopkeepers, uh, that, that shopkeeping niche on the ground floor everywhere you go is occupied in Black Rock City by people who are just giving things to people they don't know, the public gifts. And, uh, and that applies to the generation of the art and, has, has, uh, and it's affected, it powerfully affected the relationship of people and actually demonstrated that that, that, that kind of activity can actually have capabilities that that, that, that can um, uh, be very, that, that actually generates a certain amount of economic power too. You know, part of what's being done is restoring uh, economic practices that dominated throughout most of human history. I mean, uh, Aborigines, you know, traditional peoples, practically everybody prior to about, uh, I would say, the, the Roman Empire had a gift economy had a sharing economy, that was how it worked. And, and also, you know, in the beginning of the internet, uh, people say, well, there, there's never going to be anything that happens economically online. And I, and I would say, well, no, wait a second, you've got millions of keystrokes being entered every day. Now, maybe people aren't being paid to do that, but yes, I would say they probably are because other people are entering information that, that is paying them for the information they enter. There was a huge gift economy before anybody ever made a dime online. Uh, and I think it's, you know, we're just, we're trying to recognize the amount of, the extent to which people have huge value exchange that isn't necessarily monetized. There's uh, been a huge upsurge in, in, in this movement over the last couple of years. Um, do you think that, and as you say, we are to some extent uh, uh, you know, re-engaging with how society used to work prior to you know, money and things like that. But do you think there's a sort of a dissonance between and a clash happening, starting to happen between uh, this upswelling of the, the sharing economy and also at the same time at the sort of top-down level, at the big business level? You yourself are obviously always often fighting for digital rights and and for um, opening up rather than a closing down of 
things like intellectual property. Well, my main beef with intellectual property is that it's just not the right way to make money if you're, if you're creative. It's the right way to make money if you want to rip off people who are creative. Uh, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm not about, I'm certainly not, not against making money or getting, getting appropriately compensated for what you, what you do. And I, and I don't think that, you know, if you look at the sharing economy that's developing around things like Airbnb or, or Zipcar or whatever, I mean, that's, that, that's obvious that those are money-making enterprises. It's just, a, it's just a different way of looking at human resources, trying to be more efficient about them and trying to make sure that, that value gets paid for in a way that, that goes directly to the person who's producing the value and not the person who is, who's just basically making his cut. Is there any limit to this? Is, uh, a, uh, are we going to get to the point where uh, powerful forces perhaps will, will start to wonder, you know, car manufacturers, people sharing cars, suddenly car manufacturers making less money and wanting to uh, change the way we, you know, buy cars or, or whatever. What do you think? Do you think... Uh... Well, I think that given the, the present heading of the 21st century, it, it, it's, it's uh, the, the, the problem of, of, of scarce resources is going to take over and drive events. Uh, and and in, in in that world, an unlimited mass consumption on increasing scales can't possibly work. Every, everyone knows that, uh, but it, uh, and people are very apprehensive about it, and yet it, 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 no, no one's talking about it. Very we're much. eating up the Earth's resources, and we're, we're going to we'll run out eventually. We we need to kind of retool what we think about when we think about scarcity and abundance too. I mean, for example. You know, we're still we're still selling bandwidth on a scarcity model. Well, the reality is that the more bandwidth you give people, the more they want. Uh, the best way to the best way to to increase demand for bandwidth is to make it plentiful. And there are a lot of things like this. I mean, we just we just were enchanted by the old scarcity model for a long time, and and we need to we need to think about how you how you divide the pie at, even as you're expanding the pie so that you get more out of every slice of pie and, and everybody has a, a better shot at it. I mean, you, you look at, I mean, I have a 64 El Camino that gets eight miles to the gallon. I have a 2012 Audi that, that is much, much faster than my El Camino and gets 30 miles to the gallon. Well, it, it's just a matter of understanding how to how to get in there into those ergs and maximize them we need to do much more of that it's not about regulating towards scarcity it's about understanding value well not only that but if you want to the, the problem with the, the that model i mean look at the art world for instance as a case study uh, in, in, in a, it, which has become really a, a, a an elite market for collectible goods in fact you know, it's a refuge for, for you know, it's an investment market now. But, but the process, the, 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 the kind of art and the kind of artistic process that's generated by that, uh, that, that economy contradicts everything we know about creativity. Uh, uh, look, it, 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 there's a lot of art produced, a huge amount of art produced in Black Rock City. Uh, we fund, we give grants, we fund a part of it, but we, it's only a fraction. The rest of it is self-funded and funded by a community. And the art itself is designed to convene community around it and promote social interaction. And, and, and whereas in, in what agent in the art world, say in Manhattan, would, would tell a client to, uh, to do collaborative artwork? Well, if you did that, it would rob it of its brand value. Yeah, uh. yeah I, I have a friend whose, whose agent actually invited him to fake his own death to increase the value of his art. <laughs> that's no, one way of doing it. Well, not yeah, only that. that, that, that that's, how, that's how enchanted by the scarcity model they can become. Not only that, but if you... If you uh, if, no one at, 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 at our event has ever signed their art. And not because we told him not to, 
but, but be, be, because they view it as a, a gift they give to the city, and it's massively collaborative, so it's hard to assign the ownership of it to yeah. anyone. Nonetheless, artists have, have established not maybe a brand, but certainly a reputation that courses to that community, and that community extends worldwide now. And so that's led, uh, there's a whole new art economy that's growing out of uh, our efforts, which is absolutely fast fascinating. You, you can gain a reputation and you can gain a career in the world, in fact, uh, uh, doing it that way. And it's, it's there was a time when the, 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 oh, look back to the Impressionists when they were, they were, they were socializing with one another, they were copying one another's works, they were painting over one another's shoulders, mm. you know, but that's anathema if you talk, if you talk about the scarcity of the economics of, 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 of art now, mm. it, 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 you know, they walk, the, the people, poor kids come out of art school and they're walking this tightrope and, and, and on the one side, you know, is, 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 they're afraid they're going to look derivative, and on, on the other side, they're afraid they're not going to harm their work, and they're going to harmonize with the great cavalcade of art history, which certifies it as a commodity in the market. <laughs> and, 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 and as a result, they, their, their creations tend to be timid and, 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 and corporate in feel. They, 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 they don't move people. What's really happening out at Burning Man really is not about art economy, but art ecology. I mean, we've been building an ecosystem out there that is especially fertile in art, just as the Impressionists did. Uh, I mean, most great art movements are because of, of massive collaboration. Uh, people, people are much more creative when they get together and do things and create a, a, a you know, a heightened sensibilities that that are heightened by one another and have a non-linear self-amplifying field. Uh, but that's, that, as, as Larry says, that kind of runs against the, the uh, fundamental notions of how capitalism is supposed to work and how enterprise functions. We have a lot of mythology about enterprise that it would be good to address. There's been a, an increasing uh, relationship between the technology community and and Burning Man and, uh, in the last few years. Um, what do you feel about that relationship? Uh, there's uh, obviously, um, we, were, we had lunch and we were talking a little bit about how you can express yourself and you can, you can fail. You can fail at Burning Man. You can, you, you can, you can do things and it doesn't work and, and these kind of things. And they're, they're sort of maps to entrepreneurship and often to technology entrepreneurship, doesn't it? That's true in Silicon Valley too. I mean, the people that Unlike other places uh, where, where there's free enterprise, I, I don't think people get taken seriously in Silicon Valley until they've had one complete fuck up. You know, I mean, it's you're, you're, yeah, ju true. <laughs> you're, you're, you're judged by your ability to, to restore yourself from your failures. How do you feel about the relationship between Burning Man and the technology community today? Well, it's got a history, you know, the, a lot yeah. of uh, back in the a, a, a point in the 90s, around uh, oh, 96, 97, uh, suddenly folks from Silicon Valley began to, to come in droves. You know, famously, the Google guys were out. We started in a garage about the same time they started in a garage. And and uh, oh, you had them beat. And and, and 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 there are things in common. You know, they're project based, and the way they, I spoke about this earlier that that uh, uh, they. I know that Google, <coughs> interestingly enough, gives people, you know, uh, a, a ten percent. I think it's t time of their own to pursue any project, time, yeah. or is it twenty? It's twenty percent. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have, have to be anything that harmonizes with the corporation's intentions. If it does, they own it. That's fine. Mm. But but they but but they can really. I think they have quite a latitude in, in what they want to do. Mm. And and well, everything at Burning Man is project oriented. It, 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 thousands of people coming out to do some kind of some kind of project. It can be a tech-based project. It could be artwork. It can be anything that you can conceivably call creative. And uh, so that 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 rhymes with the same sensibility. And at the same time, the engineers down there are constantly, you know, facing the unknown. And they're doing something that no one's, you know, no right-thinking person is. Thought to do before, and and 
and of course that's a creed we're I mean that's that's part of our ethos is is, is radical self-expression and and I'll tell you what we know what makes bad art art doesn't works that are not don't succeed as art look at them inspect them carefully and you'll see there's nothing unknown in them that I mean that's basically what a commercial is watch any commercial everything is known everything and and the intent of course is intensely manipulative as well and and and, and again that doesn't if if the unknown isn't present then 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 art withers and and so you know you you, you have to be willing to face what you don't know and and people keep asking me how, how I started it and I've got all these stories I tell the fact of the matter is I don't remember I don't remember I remember calling someone supposedly right after I thought of it but I don't remember proposing to go do that but but I it's just it, I don't remember it because it came out of the black water it just came out and, and assembled itself in front of me and I and I thought well okay I am that and I, I must do it and it was it's that simple but also you know talk to anybody about their creative process a writer a painter anybody they'll tell you it's like that you know which is why it's so satisfying when you give birth to something and so agonizing while you're working on it <laughs> there's also for a lot of the people who are involved in Burning Man that you know they they spend their days at keyboards looking at screens pushing bits around and there's something enormously appealing about having a wrench in your hand if that's what you're doing most of the time getting getting out with stuff you can touch and build and and know at the end of the day whether you've done something that that works or doesn't work uh, and and also you know they tend to come from environments where uh, a sense of, of forced collaboration is not necessarily something that they feel as a, as a visceral reality. I mean, Burning Man is an unnatural disaster. I mean, we, we go out there and put our lives sort of collectively at risk in this in, uninhabitable environment so that we can feel what it's like to be in a, in a much more urgent situation than is likely to be presented us in Redwood City. It's more vital, as it were. Yeah. What, um, to, to, to close and to finish, what, what do you feel at the moment? What, what are your feelings about the future at the moment? Uh, are you optimistic uh, about progress? Uh, do you see dark clouds on the horizon? What do you feel? <laughs> well, both. <laughs> All of the above. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I... It, I'm, I'm optimistic uh, uh, when I'm working and, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, when I'm connecting to people and, 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 and when thinking forward, it, just having the feeling of a future, uh, uh, it, I feel that, that, that what I'm doing is aligned with that. And, and if you have a sense of agency, then, 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 you, then, then you're probably going to be an optimist. Uh, and if you don't, uh, and things are just done to you, as you imagine them, then then you probably listen. You you you, you could I can easily imagine lakes of blood <laughs> and and and, and you black can go smoke. Further than I. Can. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I, you know, I I think that that life has a way of being essentially a zero sum game. I mean, there is. There's always about the same amount of reason for optimism as there is for pessimism. Uh, you know, over the course of my life, which the same length as Larry's, it, you know, we've yeah, we just we, we, we're the we, same age. <laughs> we, we spent 40 years. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I just spent 40 years taking it as an axiomatic truth that sometime during my lifetime, the human race would incinerate itself. That was just going to happen. We were going to let them all fly, and that would be the end of that. You know. What could be more pessimistic than that? And and that didn't take, didn't happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, when I was twelve, I collected civil defense literature. Yeah, sure, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I was obsessed with it. But uh, you know, he also said something I think is really important, which is it has to do with agency. I mean, when you feel like you're actually doing something, 
when you feel like you have a sense of mission and you're and you're engaged in it, uh, whether it's whether it's going to save the world or not, it's a lot easier to feel good about the future than if you're if you're letting the world happen to you. A lot, just just quickly, I would love to get your thoughts. Uh, a lot of people think about the future in terms of uh, Google Glass and uh, the <laughs> surveillance society, uh, the panopticon, as it were. What do you feel about uh, something like that future? Well, I mean, which, which future you got there? I mean, this, practically every one of those tools has, has two edges. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, you, you can have increased surveillance. You can also have increased, uh, you can have increased anonymity. You can, you can have increased visit, you, you, can, you can vastly increase your ability to see inside that which is trying to watch you. Mm -hmm. You know, these things, any powerful technology has sauce for the goose and the gander and any, any number of other entities. It's just how, how we use it. I, I, I don't give technology a vector, really. Technology is just, is just an extension of humanity. It's, it's how, we, how we behave ourselves that counts. Well, what determines that is, you know, if you feel real in yourself, and, and if you if then can empathetically credit others with the same reality you possess, and, and, and then if you can imagine that there's something even greater than us that can be connected to, however you define it, and in that context, in that context, then I think I'm willing to make the bet that technology will be used for, you know, good purposes. Uh, if we distrust one another, well, sure. look out. Yeah. The, que the question is how we deal with fear. And that's the only question, really. You know, are we faithful or are we afraid? And everything else falls into place. If you say yes to fear, then I don't care what your technology is, it's going to fuck you. You know, I, I'll say one thing. I, I was a bicycle messenger many years ago in San Francisco, and uh, I had an, an interesting experience. Uh, I, was, I was barreling across the, the, the great thoroughfare of the city and heading for an intersection, and as a messenger, you, you, you learn to vector your, your, your route and, and, and judge the, the, the field of moving objects people in front of you, people in cars, and, and, and so you can scoot through a hole in it as you reach, as you arrive at a point up ahead, and I, and I was doing just that, and I saw a gentleman who had, had crossed and was in about four steps of making the, the, the far curb, and, 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 and stopped like a deer in the headlights and looked and stared at me, and, and, it, and, it, and it induced such adrenaline in me that time slowed down. So I saw this in slow motion. And I knew exactly what was happening to him. He was thinking with his limbic brain, and 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 he was paralyzed with fear. And then his limbic limbic brain, the fear brain, said to him, "Go back to the last place you felt safe," and that was behind him. So he did. It should be an Olympic competition. He leapt backward, you know, at, at, at like a stag, and and. and he could never do that again if he practiced to do it. And I ran into him, and I thought, as he lay sprawling, as I lifted him up, I thought, maybe I should explain this to him from my point of view. And I thought, no, no, I won't. But you can make the case right now in, in our society that we're like him. Yeah. And, 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 and there's this paralysis of political will, uh, 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 yeah. vast confusion about, 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 about the shape of an economy going forward. This, this has arrested thought because everyone seems to be caught between fight and flight and, and, and has this powerful urge to go back to something that, 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 that you can't return to. So I guess we have to go forward. It's a beautiful metaphor. I mean, we keep having these spasmodic jerks that put us right in our own path. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. You're welcome.